1957, convicted Russian spy Rudolf Babel was sentenced to 30 years, escaping the death penalty after his attorney argued that the United States might want to swap Babel for an American at some future time. Now, Abel has been exchanged for U-2 pilot Gary Powers. Fear. Fear tortured American citizens relentlessly throughout the 1950s and 1960s. Fear of nuclear destruction, fear of communists, of traitors. However, this constant state of panic changed with one man, one hero and his passion for the United States justice system. James Donovan and his effort to ease tensions with Soviet personnel changed American society. Donovan put himself on the line to pull off one of the greatest spy exchanges in history. His humble yet determined attitude made him one of the most successful lawyers of all time. His work inspires generations of future lawyers and citizens, and his mission to give everyone a fair, just trial is a moral that everyone should stand by in today's society. I think it would be hard put to find even somebody today that had the mental acumen to also be pretty fearless as to repercussions. James Donovan lived during one of the most feared, dangerous times in United States history. After attending Harvard Law School, he became a Navy commander and worked for the Office of Scientific and Development and the Office of Strategic Services during World War II. World War II was the beginning of the long-standing conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union, which would later evolve into the Cold War. Ultimately, the differences between the two governing systems following World War II were the main causes of the rise of tensions between the two nations. If we all work together to maintain and strengthen our democratic ideals, communism will never be a serious threat to our American way of life. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, tensions escalated dramatically between the two powerhouse countries. At home, fear overcame millions of American families. Nuclear war loomed. People turned against each other in order to avoid being considered communist. Soviet spies lurked in many American streets looking for military and political secrets. Soviet Rudolf Ivanovich Abel was among one of the few discreet communist spies who lived among American citizens. Abel was born under the name William Fisher in Newcastle, England. However, in 1921, at the age of 18, he moved with his Bolshevik parents to Russia. In 1948, Fisher moved illegally to the United States as a part of a communist spy mission to relay atomic secrets to the Soviet Union. Fisher adopted the name M.L. Goldfuss and registered as a practicing artist and photographer in Brooklyn. In secret, he was sending classified information back to Soviet officials. For nine years, Goldfuss maintained to stay out of the public eye. He was a very careful, very uh, compulsive agent in the sense of taking care that he wouldn't be discovered. However, on June 21, 1957, both the FBI and Immigration and Naturalization Services, or INS, intruded into Fisher's hotel because of a notification from a young boy. The INS administered an administrative arrest warrant, so the organization searched Fisher's apartments and bag. Fisher was taken into custody under the name Rudolf Ivanovich Abel, a name he used to signal to Russian authorities of his capture. No one at the time knew his real name. Fisher, or Abel as he was known to Americans, was taken to McAllen, Texas, where interrogators interrogated him for five weeks and asked him to become a double agent for the United States. Abel would not comply, however. Eventually, they completely changed their attitude and charged him with espionage on three counts. Abel was threatened with life in prison and the death penalty. He patiently awaited his trial date. Most American lawyers do not want to defend the greatest spy captured in the United States, and very few believed he should receive a fair trial because he was a communist. However, one man humbly accepted the position. James B. Donovan was more than qualified for the job, for he had previously been a key prosecutor for the Nuremberg trials. His belief in an equal trial for all ignited him to accept this daunting task. He claimed that giving Abel an honest defense to the best of my ability would be serving my country and my profession. Donovan compromised his entire law career and his reputation in order to prove a point. All men and women are given the right to an attorney and a fair, speedy trial. On November 9, 1959, Donovan and Abel took the stand for Abel's defense. Donovan was criticized for his work in this case. He was called a commie lover and received numerous threatening phone calls. In midst of the conflict surrounding this time period and surrounding this court case, however, Donovan looked past the communist stereotypes and found an unlikely colleague and friend. He actually had affection for Abel. 
he liked the man, and he understood that he was, he was not an evil man, he was just a guy doing his job. Despite the odds, Donovan was able to persuade four out of the nine Supreme Justices that Abel was innocent of the charges. He argued that it was illegal for the government to simultaneously arrest Abel for espionage while trying to convince him to become a double agent. Additionally, he argued that the FBI merely used the administrative arrest warrant as a way around the law instead of getting a proper search warrant, which went against the Fourth Amendment. Abel was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison. However, it was Donovan's ability to persuade the court to dismiss the death penalty that secured the prisoner exchange to come. He stated that it is possible that in the foreseeable future, an American of equivalent rank will be captured by Soviet Russia or an ally. At such time, an exchange of prisoners through diplomatic channels could be considered in the best national interest of the United States. Abel remained locked in his jail cell for three years. Then, on May 1, 1960, pilot Francis Powers' plane was shot down over the USSR and he faced up to 10 years in a Soviet prison. Donovan immediately got to work on figuring out a way to set up an exchange of Powers for Abel. Powers was hired by the CIA in 1956 to fly a U-2 plane over the Soviet Union, which was expected to be at a height above Russian detection. However, four years later, Powers was shot down in Russia and immediately arrested by the KGB. In 1961, Donovan received a letter from East Berlin confirming Soviet interest in the possible trade of Powers for Abel. President Kennedy, who was now in contact with Donovan about the exchange, told Donovan that his priority was to get Powers back home. However, he also hoped to get U.S. citizen Frederick Pryor back on U.S. soil. Frederick Pryor was a student at Yale University who was studying in West Berlin. On a trip to East Berlin on August 25, 1961, he was surrounded by Soviet officials and arrested for a supposed espionage. Kennedy warned Donovan that the task at hand was risky, and the United States could not afford to back Donovan should anything go wrong. Donovan was willing to compromise his own life to ensure the exchange happened successfully. On February 3, 1962, Donovan traveled to East Berlin without even telling his family of his whereabouts. For eight days, Donovan communicated with KGB officer Ivan Shishkin and Russian lawyer Vogel at meetings in East Berlin. Finally, after constant dispute, they agreed to a compromise for the conflict at hand. The lawyers agreed upon the exchange of powers for Abel, and separately, Donovan was given permission to arrange the liberation of student Frederick Pryor. On February 10, 1962, Donovan and a few work colleagues met at the Gleenick Bridge to formally complete the spy exchange. At 8.20 a.m., Donovan and Abel met at the center of the bridge with the Soviet authorities and Francis Powers. However, they could not formally finish the exchange until Donovan had word of Pryor's liberation. At 8.45 a.m., sources confirmed the exchange of Frederick Pryor at Checkpoint Charlie, and at 8.52, Francis Powers was successfully exchanged for Rudolf Ivanovic Abel. Donovan's countless hours of investigation and problem solving paid off in one of the greatest spy exchanges in history. Let me say first that I'm deeply pleased that the pilot, Mr. Powers, and the student, Mr. Pryor, have been released and reunited with their families. I shall be doubly pleased if their release turns out to be a sign of possible significant progress in the lessening of world tensions. Donovan, shortly after, helped to secure the release of 1,100 CIA members in Cuba. However, in 1970, at the age of 53, Donovan suffered from a heart attack and passed away. Little is known of Abel's life following the spy exchange. He moved back to the Soviet Union and was supposedly considered a hero for being able to spy undetected for nine years. Abel passed away in 1971 from lung cancer at the age of 68. Francis Powers was unappreciated upon his return home, and he struggled to find work. He passed away in 1977 from a plane crash in Santa Barbara. Posthumously, however, Powers was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and the Prisoner of War Medal. Donovan's bravery and the spy exchange story was long forgotten by most. However, in 2015, Steven Spielberg released a film depicting the story of the secret spy exchange entitled The Bridge of Spies. However, Donovan's legacy is even more impactful than the film portrays. He learned what was the core of people and what's the right and what's the wrong. James B. Donovan's legacy is prominent even today. His character and his belief in a fair, just trial for everyone sheds light on what type of person he was. Donovan's willingness to compromise his entire career for the benefit of society justifies his passion for both his country and the study of law. He impacted everyone he encountered. James Donovan's high moral standards, legacy, and character should never be forgotten because he espoused the basic fiber of American values, equality for all.